Hi YouTube, welcome to uh, another video. Uh, in this video I'm going to uh, show you the steps uh, of taking your uh, PCB design from a program called Fritzing. Uh, Fritzing is great, it's super easy to use um, free software to design PCBs um, and I'll explain the steps uh, needed to take that in uh, to um, get this cut out. So. I have a CNC machine, CNC router. Um, so I, this video assumes you have uh, access to one. Now, um, obviously, not a lot of people have them. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't and are interested in making your own PCBs, you can, um, uh, you know, check out to see if there's a local make, uh, a hack space or maker space uh, where uh, you have access to one. Um, because it's great, you can save yourself a lot of money and learn a lot uh, about the process. Um, so the PCB, the board that I'm working on is called uh, Megasquirt and it's actually an engine management um, computer. For those of you who found this video um, uh, based on the Megasquirt search, uh, who want to know more about it, then um, I'm gonna cover uh, the components on the Megasquare and um, how I've taken the Megasquare design, uh, the original MS 2.2 design, and remade it in Fritzing, and um, yeah, uh, and what I've changed. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with Megasquare, I just want to know um, the you know, the process for uh, getting this cut out. Uh, then uh, yeah, skip on, and I'll provide the overlays for that. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. So, uh, I am about to show you taking a Fritzing P PCB design and then uh, processing it for CNCing, uh, for routing on a CNC router uh, using Mac 3. So basically generating the G code that your machine control software will run in order to cut this thing out. So basically uh, what we do is um, well, before we get into that, I'll, I'll explain, um, I'll show you, um, kind of give you a guide um, of what these components are on the Megasquare 1 uh, V2.2 board. So here we have the um, the Motorola or NXP, I think uh, they are now, uh, the, the 8 megahertz uh, microcontroller that runs the whole thing. Um, it um, operates uh, on uh, five volts. There's um, so if we go trace that back, um, basically it goes through a bunch of uh, tracks, and it comes to uh, this. Actually, no, it's not a transistor. It's a voltage regulator, but it has the same um, package as the transistors here. So it's called TO22, uh, I think, the package. Um, it's um, so sort of three legs and the back of it is um, is a tab which can be uh, fastened to well the board in this case so what this um, what this uh, is it takes in um, varying voltage between uh, you know the whatever the car battery and the alternator put out you know between um, the car battery will be you know between 12 and uh, 15 volts or something um, but these voltage regulators actually um, the the one that the mega square spec uses is very low dropout it's called um, uh, it's called dropout uh, which is a term used to describe um, the minimum voltage required at the input in order for it to just to, to sustain the 5 volt output. Um, so in this case it's um, it's not a very powerful voltage regulator, it can only provide about 500 milliamps, so half an amp, um, but the dropout voltage is actually very low, it's half a volt, so this thing will run, will provide 5 volts for the microcontroller and all, this, all the components um, if the input is 5.5 or more so I mean that's that's pretty amazing um, it basically that covers you know pretty much the, the, the whole uh, spectrum of voltages to, and and more that your uh, car might might the, the mega square might experience uh, you know even cranking so when when you're 
when you're cranking the engine uh, you know your voltage might drop you know if it's very unhealthy uh, or if it's a high compression ratio engine and you know your um, battery cables are thin or your ground is thin to the starter um, it might drop down to 8 volts or something you know so the Megascope will survive that which is great because <clears throat> it needs to it needs to be able to see your uh, your crank in, uh, input um, pulses to, to, to know when to start firing these injectors anyway um, so we've got the uh, the Motorola chip here uh, power going into it and then uh, it's got various inputs and various outputs um, uh, most of these uh, inputs and outputs uh, have been um, uh, some some of them are fixed obviously and they're routed through all the components necessary and then they come out here in this the main header which is the 37 pin connector like a printer kind of parallel port connector just just bigger um, and you know so this goes out to um, uh, let me get the um, uh, where is it? There we go, like one of these um, circuit sort of diagrams. So yeah, uh, you know this 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 will go out to all your uh, air term, coolant term sensors, throttle position sensors, injector drivers go through here as well. Um, uh, the ignition signal for the coil pack, um, basically like your main um, engine harness goes through here. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, some of these signals need to go through uh, all the passive components, so like the capacitors and the resistors and you know inductors. And these were these are all the tiny little uh, components which uh, which sort of you can see here. Um, anyway, uh, going back to the chip here, um, like I mentioned, the outputs are routed through a bunch of these passives. Uh, uh, some of um, the outputs um, are routed to header pins, uh, which are then kind of they're there for you to interface, you know, to if you if you want to. Um, so what I've done with this with this board is I used the um, the uh, the official uh, uh, bowling and grippo uh, design, and I've modified it and basically I've um, pulled out all these extra pins into uh, kind of you know pads, solderable via uh, solderable pads, which um, just will allow me to you know future proof it so in the future I can just run whatever I want to it uh, and out of it um, so whilst we're on that topic um, I'll explain this part here this part here is my extra connector that I put in which is um, a lot of people put these connectors on uh, into the case it's cool it's basically like a larger version of the serial connector I'll cover that in a minute um, but um, a lot of the time when people are using the official board the board doesn't have um, you know um, the provisions for these uh, they it doesn't have the traces for this connector so they put the connector in and you know they have wires going to the ignition drivers or whatever which are then you know can be fixed like to the roof of the case uh, where are we I'll show you that in a minute I had that here somewhere ah oh, close it ah oh, here we go so like you know you put the ignition drivers on the case here which is great for thermal um, uh, cooling the chips down and whatever um, but uh, you know it's not very tidy because it's you know it's wires flying everywhere and especially when you have um, you know a lot of current and you know going through these um, chips these wires are kind of a you know dangling and, and can cause interference and you know they if they're kind of running next to each other and not crossing uh, you know they can cause inductive sort of interference which is you know other wires picking up those signals by you know not intentionally so what I've done is um I've taken um, some of these um, so I, I got rid of the LEDs which is what normally goes here which you know um, they're not really very useful at all um, these LEDs here um, these are three outputs you know which can be used for other things so, and uh, you know the MS extra firmware that you load onto the chip that actually uses these as outputs and the instructions say you know attach your output your device to the to this side of the resistor which is kind of the raw output from the processor you know and you, you can use that as a signal um, basically which so I've kind of done away with that and I've I've pushed those um, signals into the 15 pin 
uh, connector here. So I, what I did is I've put three, um, three general purpose sort of um, hex vets. I'm going to call them hex vets. They're basically transistors that are able to be triggered by a logic pulse from the chip. You know, so the this signal that comes out of the chip. The main processor is very low uh, voltage and it's very low uh, current and obviously that needs to be the case because you you know you, it's not really a priority for uh, to, to amplify the signal in the chip you know you can because you might you might want a low current you know low low voltage low current signal anyway so so these FETs uh, their, their job is to amplify that signal and um, help put a higher uh, higher voltage um, to you know, so they can drive relays directly. Uh, you can drive, um, you know, whatever. Anyway, so uh, these outputs are configurable in the firmware on Tuner Studio or uh, Mega Tune or whatever. Um, and what actual hardware uh, we, I'm going to use for these, I, I don't know yet. But I'm just putting the pads in here, so you know, for future, whatever. Um, I've also what I've done is I've I've, I've put the common mod of um, of using this LED channel and this LED channel as um, high current coil drivers um, so that's what people commonly do um, according to these uh, this diagram here um, so the LED where are we uh, where's the official thing ah, well, I lost it Oh, no. okay. So like LED 9 and LED 11 are used as uh, ignition outputs uh, and so people kind of take uh, take this signal, so the signal from the process comes in here and route that into your transistor and then the transistor which is fixed you know, somewhere to the case then switches on and acts like a, a, a high, vo high current high voltage switch anyway, So I've put these drivers actually on the board um, here uh, with plenty of space for putting heat sinks on them and basically all they do so like the switching signal comes in from the processor but both like two, the the other legs so the sort of essentially the input and the output um, are doubled up for each chip so and and and, and come out this connector so basically uh, yeah the current capacity is increased so like the input um, uh, is, is two pins um, you know so it should handle like whatever you know, these connectors handle five, ten amps, whatever. So maybe fifteen amps or something would be fine to switch through here, which is cool. Um, you know, that that covers a high, high, uh, an un, non-amplified coil. Um, and if um, if it is a, a coil pack or a coil unplug uh, coil that has its own. Uh, what they called I, I refer to it as a driver but it's uh, it's igniter I think yeah if it has its own igniter then obviously you can just take the low current signal and bypass these so I would just have just rub out scratch off this connector here or leave these unconnected and just bridge this um, input the logic level input uh, with the output just make a solder bridge here and just pump that straight into my coil which is what I'm going to do actually um, anyway moving on uh, I've got the boot jumper here which you short out if you're updating uploading the firmware um, which brings us to this area here this area here uh, this um, was it dip uh, how many pins one two three four five six seven eight sixteen so sixteen pin uh, chip is a, is a serial uh, interface it's called um, so max three two four or something like that. Um, uh, all it does it basically allows uh, your computer to talk to the uh, to to send data to the chip to the main microcontroller through this uh, max serial port uh, interface. Uh, and uh, yeah, all it uses is two pins actually, and um, I don't know, does some clever stuff. Uh, so that pretty much covers it. Um, oh yeah, these these two here. Um, I'll just mention these items here, which are screwed to the case. They're actually the injector drivers. Um, then we've got what other components? We've got this thing here and this thing here. I think one of them is an opto isolator, which is used to kind of uh, 
um, detach, I suppose, the input from the output. Uh, so, like, if you have a very, um, uh, you have different voltages, for example, or different. Uh, if you have sensitive components that need to be switched on and off, um, they need to be sort of decoupled from um, uh, kind of noisy and um, ripply uh, components that might be triggering them. So you you push that you put that signal through uh, these opto isolators, and that so you know if one um, like if the voltage spikes on the input side, you know it's not directly actually connected to the output side. There's a sort of a, a layer of protection in there, so that's what they're used for. Um, yeah, there's not uh, not much else on here. The the V two point two board doesn't have the um, the VR sensor conditioning circuit, um, which means triggering so providing a trigger input for to the megascope is a little bit more tricky uh, on the older board that's 2.2 now uh, the v3 has has um, a couple of trim pots which you kind of adjust until you get a clean signal from your cra uh, your crank angle sensor cas which a lot of cars use and you know other engines so here's the board anyway um moving on uh, oh i've been i'm sorry i've been, been babbling on 15 minutes okay um right so let's take this uh let's go through the process of of getting this cut out uh on your machines so this is a dual layer board which means um it has tracks on both sides dual layer boards obviously need to be cut on one side and then flipped over and cut on the other side so they need to be like uh, they need to 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 be flipped and positioned in the same place uh, both times, obviously, uh, so the traces line up. Um, so to aid this, what I've done is put four holes in the very corners of the board, and I've kind of uh, put this little hole um, in the very corner, and then I, I moved it in uh, and uh, up, up and across the, the same amount on all corners so it should actually line up um, I'm just you know if it doesn't line up exactly it's not going to be the end of the world but you know some of these um, traces may uh, what happens is you know if it doesn't line up uh, the, the the actual pad gets cut too close to the hole and it it's no longer a full circle of copper um, but anyway you know you can fix that with some creative soldering so I'm not too worried about that at the moment uh, it's just just the trial run well no trial it's like a, it is a prototype and I'm, I'm gonna use it if it comes out well but uh, otherwise you know it's, the board's not that expensive so you can do it again anyway um, um, yeah so let's um, let's output this so fritzing uh, can output various formats uh, a PDF SVG and Gerber now Gerber, Ger, the Gerber format is the most useful, I think, um, and that's what I've used in the past, so I'm going to do that. And what happens is, um, I've already output one lot here, so I'm just going to create a new folder. Gerber output uh, 2 and um, just select a folder, and then Fritzing just goes nuts and creates a bunch of files in there. It creates um, the copper layers for both sides, it creates uh, the <laughs> code for drilling the holes uh, it creates the um, you know the, the like the graphics layer as well uh, solder mask um, yeah all that good stuff so now that that's been output what the software I use for uh, creating the G code is called flat cam uh, and it's free software and it's great 